Hello, and welcome to Notes 9. I'm David Leedy from LotusNotebook.com. Episode 16, Improved Agent User Experience, Putting the Pretty into Productivity. This is a, a show for the Notes client developers out there. What I want to talk about today is using an agent framework to, to basically give your users a better experience uh, calling basically what is agent code. Um, this kind of goes back many years when I did an article for Lotus Advisor magazine on on this agent launcher topic that I did um, and kind of came up with and uh, I use it and I, I haven't really blogged about it much since then or so but I, I got to thinking about it when I was sitting at Lotus Fira 2010 and I saw a Scott Good did a wonderful section called There's No Fixing Ugly. And what he did is he had this great slide deck that is uh, uh, that shows you basically before and after examples of not just notes applications, but uh, basically, you know, cars or, or buildings or things that... The, and the point of the whole thing is that that people's expectations are different than what they used to be in the 90s or or even you know the 2000s or so I mean you used to be able to get away with a ugly notes app and because of that we have a lot of ugly notes apps out there and uh, I've got more than my share um, but now you look at the iPods you look at what Apple's doing you look at you know the simplicity of you know the Google's uh, home page and, and all these aesthetic designs that are everywhere um, that people's expectations are different and you really have to uh, start to make things prettier. So what I would highly recommend you do is you go over to his website, uh, which I've got listed here, and you download the slides for BP202, and they stand. The slide deck stands alone. I just looked at it the other day. Um, so if you haven't seen this the the session, um, you can basically just play the slides, and and you'll get the point across of how the pretty needs to come and, and you have to start factoring in the user experience and the user interface uh, because the users are using your application so I want to talk about this agent framework so why are we going to use an agent framework well this is going to give us better documentation for the users they're going to before they click on an agent they're going to know what the agents going to do um, I have a chicken switch built in there's a confirmation dialogue uh, that can be called on the basic an are you sure um, I've got security built into this so you can get a readers fields on these agents and they're not really agents they are kind of like pseudo agents they are really functions in a script library and that gives us the, the code reuse um, and the security by putting readers fields on the setup documents allows the administrator of the d database to basically divvy up access however they want um, and and that relieves the developer from having to do it um, now, doing an agent framework will cause more upfront effort. There's no question about that. Um, uh, there, there's more work involved. But the, the easiest path is really the best path. So I believe that, that this is more work and that it's worth it in the end. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about and hopefully you'll agree with me. Okay, so here's a, a before database a before agent launcher and it's ugly and where is it ugly it's ugly right here and and I've seen this before and and hopefully you'll never do this but here's a whole bunch of agents that can be run and you you know even though there's a little description here you don't know what they do uh, the user doesn't know what they do um, someone's gonna get hurt if you just leave your agents here like this so well, what do you do well I like to do this I like to go into my database and I like to have actions agent launcher and I present the user with a dialog box with the list of the agent, which is really just a function, so it's kind of like a pseudo agent, with a list of their agents over here and a nice description of what they're going to do. Okay, so then you're educating the user. Users come, users go. Um, so this is a almost self-documenting, really, and it's, it's, it's a, a big benefit, and, and my users do uh, really like it. Um, and because this is an agent framework, really, is what we're talking about, if I click this off, you can add things to the framework. So if I want to run this on multiple documents, I can say, okay, and bam, it's going to come up with a nice confirm dialog 
with the description of the agent and how many documents are selected. Uh, maybe the user had more documents selected than, than they thought they had. So presenting this information to them gives them a chance to say no. Um, maybe you have a view. Oh, let's go back up here. Maybe you have a, a view that's hidden, but a certain user needs to use it, and you don't really want to build in fancy navigation system on the on the left hand side so you could throw a view up here and then it can just open the view and now that didn't have a con con confirmed dialogue because you don't really need that for a view uh, why would you um, so don't need it don't use that part of the framework okay let's see how this works well I've got a basic little form here to control the dialogue box nothing too fancy about that I've got the setup document that would be set up and here you can notice the readers field so in theory a, a database administrator could use this um, readers fields and and determine who is worthy enough to have access to what functionality and they wouldn't need you for that you would still need to set up basically the rest of this document or at least uh, give the instructions on how to how to do that um, but then the the giving the access could be delegated to somebody else the actual agent launcher agent doesn't do anything but call the document and pass to this function here choose code certain parameters the the actual code the name of the agent and that you're gonna use in Lotus script the selected documents and the optional parameter and the the descriptive name the, the human readable name and that's used in the confirmation dialog box where we present the description the descriptive name back to the user make sure that they clicked on the right thing and then the bulk of it is in a, a script library and you could have multiple script libraries right now I've just got this one for the example and here's the choose code function it passes that all in so for each agent you I'm just using a select case for that for that programmatic name that would be in the configuration document and most of them I wrap in a confirm function which is right here and I pass in the the descriptive name and the collect dot count and that takes care of what it needs to take care of to present that dialog box and tell them how many documents they're going to act on here's that call to the open view where you wouldn't need the con confirmation um, and then basically for the different cases here's a particular agent for agent big for the example or a no doc needed or so so you can have a function in here for each of what would have been your agents or you could call to other script libraries and and reuse your code and and that's really the meat of it um so it is a little more work to do there's there's no question about that it's can be kind of a pain but i think it's worth it to get this effect and give that to your users if you have an application where you want users to run uh, a lot of different functionality in there and that's the demo thank you very much and that's the demo so I hope you like that now I'm gonna have the files up on uh, lotusnotebook.com so you can kinda play with it um, and if you need anything or you have any questions um, here's my contact information thank you for your watching